Hello, welcome to the vlog. I'm moored at Grove Lock, which is about three miles and three locks further on than I left you at the end of the last vlog. The reason for that is I had some special guests aboard, and you will see that, but in a future vlog. Today's plan is to go through Leighton Buzzard, possibly stop off at the supermarket if there's a space on that mooring spot, and then position myself for going through, uh, what's it called, Milton Keynes, obviously, immediately after that, tomorrow. Tomorrow's forecast, this is mid-October, it's supposed to be up to 23 degrees Celsius. So it's going to be a lovely day to go through Milton Keynes tomorrow, hopefully. And indeed, today is not looking bad either. Setting off is the glorious sunshine and immediately past the classic working boat Dover, who are viewers of the vlog, so hello Dover. At this point, you see that dog on the towpath staring fixedly into the middle of the canal. I couldn't work out what he was staring at. There is nothing there, but he was absolutely fixed on something. As I got closer, I realised his tennis ball was floating in the canal. He'd lost it. I slowed down to try to reach it out for him, but just coming past in the boat washed it a little closer to the bank, and the dog's owner was able to reach for it with a stick. You can see it just going past the bow there. You'll be pleased to know the dog got his ball back and lived happily ever after. Coming into Leighton Buzzard now, there is supposedly a water point and a waste bin point round here, just before the winding hole, and I could do with stopping for those, if I can see them. Rubbish dropped off at this rubbish point. The water point apparently is round the corner. Which is also where the supermarket is, so... I must have not noticed it on the way through last time. No wonder I didn't notice it, it's underneath this tree. There it is, hidden under this canopy of trees. While I'm waiting for the water to fill, I thought I'd video these. These being the metal edges there, the metal vertical bars with the grooves in them. Other vloggers have shown these before and I don't think I ever have. And you see these all over the canal network under bridges and you can see the grooves better if I come in a bit closer. And what these are is a relic of when the boats were drawn by horse and as the ropes came round the corner they wore away the brickwork of the bridges. So they ended up putting these metal bars on them to stop the brickwork being worn away and instead you end up with all the metalwork being worn away and all these grooves are from ropes going by over decades. Real proper bit of history. 
See there's one on the other side as well there. And you just see them all over the place, under the bridges. With the water tank filled, I managed to squeeze in for a quick stop at Tesco's. And I'm now fully restocked, so I can head off through Leighton Buzzard and position myself hopefully by Solbury Three Locks, which is where I stopped when I came down. Very nice spot. And then I'll be ready for Milton Keynes tomorrow. The ducks love being next to the supermarket. There's always people with something to feed them. Unfortunately, it's mostly bread, which is very bad for ducks, but they don't care, they just eat it. Clayton Buzzard Lock done. Onwards to the three locks at Solbury. I have quite a fondness for small narrowboats. And something like this tiny tug. It's just very nice, very nice indeed. Just some fantastic colour in the trees, isn't there? Absolutely lovely. Unexpected item in the canaling area. The trouble with having a generator is you do have to 
put that kind of chain on it because someone else will have it otherwise. This is the Solbury Three Locks. Three locks in quick succession. Now, is that someone coming up? That could help. Even better than another boat coming up. I spy with my little eye something beginning with VL. Yes, it's volunteer lock keepers. They're going to take me down the flight. Some sort of restoration work going on there at the boiler room at the old pump house at lock number two of this set of three. I can smell pub food and it smells really good. Locks done very efficiently. Many thanks to the volunteers at Solbury. And now I'm just on the hunt for somewhere to stop, ideally with some sunshine on the solar panels. It was along here that I moored in a very nice spot when I came down this way. And it is popular, as you can see, but I'm hoping I'll be able to squeeze in on the end somewhere. Isn't this an absolutely beautiful morning? It's just gone nine o'clock and it is already very warm, quite humid, but very nice. And I'm about to attempt the impossible. Well, I may exaggerate slightly. I'm going to try and get from here, which is just above Stoke Hammond Lock, all the way to the other side of Milton Keynes to Cosgrove. However, as I've discovered quite a substantial diesel leak in the engine bay that appeared yesterday, whether that will happen or not remains to be seen. There's Stoke Hammond Lock, and there's a hire boat in it going down that went past me shortly before I set off, but I wasn't ready to join them at that point. But, um, anyway, it just means I'll have to set the lock again when they're out. This long stretch of moored boats marks that you're just starting to come up to the southernmost tip of Milton Keynes.
right then. Signs of a town. reached Fenny Stratford facilities point where I need to empty my Lucaset. There's also that lock with the swing bridge across it here, but I've caught that hire boat up. So we'll probably end up in the lock together, I'd imagine. Well, this has come on a bit since I came through a couple of weeks ago. I see there's still someone in the water though. Hope it's not that same chap been there for two weeks. That would be unfortunate and cold. Here's today's heron. I didn't get a chance to show you this on the way down, but this is where the brand new Bedford and Milton Keynes waterway will start. This end obviously is Milton Keynes and it will go over eastwards towards Bedford. Huge amount of construction underway. I seem to recall thinking it looked like they were building a marina as well, but I don't know if that's actually true. Certainly some of the works which you now can't see because of that hedge had the look of marina about them. I'll get another view in a second. There we go. That's all the works. And you can clearly see in that steelwork beginnings of an entrance to a waterway. But also amongst that what looks like pontoons. So I presume there's going to be a marina here as well. Someone will no doubt correct me in the comments. That's not looking entirely solid, is it? Lunchtime. A cheese sandwich, of course. Heading out of MK now, that's the Grafton Street Aqueduct done again. That's it, I have exited Milton Keynes. Cosgrove lies directly ahead. But I think I'm going to carry on for another three-ish miles to Yardley Gobian, 
which is a little village in the middle of nowhere I stopped on the way down and I'm thinking that because there's a boat yard there and if my diesel leak isn't something obvious, a loose screw or something I can tighten up myself, it would be quite handy to have a boat yard that I could pop into and they could have a look at what's wrong. So I think I will press on. It's three o'clock now, so hopefully near the boatyard for about 4.30 I suppose, maybe five. With the lock at Cosgrove done, I now just head out into the countryside until I get to my destination. I didn't manage to film this rather splendid bridge when I came through the other way. Still at Cosgrove, this is I suppose the boundary of Cosgrove. But isn't that marvellous? somebody went to all the trouble of making a bridge look like that when it could have just been functional. The boatyard whose mercy I think I might have to throw myself upon just beyond that bridge. So what I really need is a nice mooring spot immediately opposite. I know there are some, but they were full last time I came through, so moment of truth as soon as I go through the bridge.